incredibly lucky keepers here in the marine mammal department. And before we get things started, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land that we're currently on, the Camaragal. The Camaragal, and especially Camaragal women, shed a very close connection to the ocean, Sydney Harbour, and all of the animals that lived in it. And through our seals, we hope to share that same connection. Now, speaking of seals, all the seals you'll be meeting today, they're either rare, rescued, or have been relocated. And these seals are some of Stronger's incredibly special ambassadors for the wild. Especially the first seal you'll be meeting today, his name is Moby, and he's an incredibly handsome Australian sea lion. Now, sadly, Australian sea lions, they're one of the most endangered seal species out there. Current estimated to be less than 10,000 individuals left in the wild. Moby here was born at Trong Zoo as a part of our breeding program for this endangered species. He's been here for about five years now. And hopefully in a couple more years, once he reaches maturity, he'll go on to share his genetics to future Australian sea lion offsprings. Now, did you know you, I, and Moby, we've all got something in common. Have a look at your hand. And now have a look at Moby's front flipper. The bone structure in our hand is the same bone structure that can be found in that flipper. Now those flippers might look awkward for moving around on land, but they allow eared seals just like Moby to move much quicker and easier than you might expect. So Moby, why don't you go for a walk for everyone this morning? Now with the ability to fold those rear flippers under their body, they're able to walk around on all fours and they can even outrun us on land over short distances. But of course, it really is in the water where those flippers show us what they're made of. Now moving like this through the water is known as bowing or porpoising. It's an incredibly energy efficient way for many air breathing marine animals to move through the water, catching a quick breath of air every time they leap. Now this allows seals to keep up their terrific speeds of up to 40 kilometers an hour when chasing down their prey or escaping from a predator. Now of course, to be able to power them through the water at those incredible speeds, those flippers need to be incredibly strong. At the moment, Moby's weighing in at a whopping 120 kilograms. That's nowhere near the weight that he'll reach when he's an adult. Male Australian sea lions can reach weights of up to 400 kilograms, but those flippers will be able to support that entire weight for their entire life. Give him a massive round of applause. Good job, buddy. <laughs> well, now Moby's just out here to get us started, so he's going to make his way back home. I feel like he needs to go back to bed. <laughs> For the next seal you'll be meeting, he might not be much quicker than Moby. His name is Bondi, and he's a rescued New Zealand fur seal. Now, New Zealand fur seals, of course, as the name suggests, can be found in the waters around New Zealand, but they're also the most common seal species that you'll find right here in Sydney Harbour. Bondi himself, he was found on Bondi Beach when he was very young. He was only weighing about seven kilograms and he had a shark bite that took up over two thirds of his body. Now luckily our wildlife hospital team rescued him and nursed him back to the healthy state that you're gonna see him in today. But Bondi spent many, many months in our care and he was deemed not suitable to be released. So he came down here to Seal Theatre to be an ambassador for his species. Now Bondi's been here for about eight years now. During his time at Tarongazoo, he's made many good friends, both keeper and seal alike. But he's even got himself a girlfriend, and about a year and a half ago, he had his very first pup, the Ruby. <laughs> now you'll notice that when Bondi comes out here, as you can see him now, he does look incredibly different to Moby. That's because Bondi being a fur seal, he has two incredibly thick layers of fur, whereas Moby being a sea lion, he only had one. Fur seals like Bondi here only ever really reach weights of up to 150 to 200 kilograms. <laughs> So they don't have a large amount of blubber to keep them warm. So they have this incredibly dense two layers of fur to do that instead. Now Bondi and Keeper Edge, they're gonna be showing you something known as husbandry. Husbandry is something that all of our keepers do with all of our animals every single morning before our guests come into the zoo. And it's a way of getting our animals to participate in their own daily health care. See, out there in the wild, seals and many other animals are incredibly good at hiding any of their injuries or illnesses from any predators they might, they might have. And here at the zoo, that natural instinct is still there as well. So we can train our seals to feel very comfortable presenting different parts of their body and feel comfortable touching all over their body as well. If we notice any 
medical issues going on with our seals, we can call our vet hospital team down to seal theatre and they can look over Bondi. If they deem any more extreme medical procedures need to be done, a lot of our seals can be easily trained to go through these medical procedures, such as lying still over x-ray machines, or for our female seals, they can be trained to sit still so that we can ultrasound their bellies. Well, I think Bondi is looking pretty healthy this morning, so why don't we give him a round of applause. Good job, Bondi. Well, now we're going to start getting into some of our high energy seals. The next seals that you'll be meeting, they're both California sea lions. The first California sea lion you'll be meeting, his name is Pepper, and he's 13 years old. Now, Pepper relocated to us from a zoo in Holland when he was very young. As I mentioned, he's now 13, but he's also one of the most experienced seals that we have here at the zoo. Pepper knows almost every single behavior that we teach here. So every single day is a new challenge to make sure that Pepper's life is well enriched and we're having to think of new uh, behaviors to teach him. So he's using up all of that energy he gets from his incredibly large daily food intake. Now Pepper, he's currently weighing in at a whopping 250 kilograms, but that's nowhere near the weight that he'll reach in the summer months. Pepper's uh, maximum weight last year was about 350 kilograms. Now, Pepper does sound a little bit different to Bondi that you heard earlier, so Pepper, do you want to say good morning to everyone? Yeah, give him a round of applause. Now, Pepper and Keeper Michelle, they're out here today to show you all the life of a seal. Sea lions like Pepper are perfectly designed for both life in the water and on the land. During the breeding season or the molting season, sea lions like Pepper tend to spend a lot of time on land, hauled out, or getting a quick suntan. During this molting season, they have to lose that layer of fur, and to do that, they need to be able to scratch all that loose fur off as well. Of course, their front flippers are very powerful and help with that, but Pepper also has three claws on the back of his flippers, along with his flexible neck and spine, allow him to reach all over his body. But as we saw with Moby, it really is in the water where we see how well designed a seal's body is. They're very impressive whiskers that I'll explain to you a little bit more about later. <laughs> Need to be well looked after. So those powerful front flippers also help them remove any scales or spines that they might get stuck in them while they're hunting. Their flippers are also completely naked and hairless. As I mentioned, they are covered in a very thick layer of fur, but even in the water, due to that fur coat, they can sometimes even overheat. So to cool themselves down, what Pepper will do is he'll stick one of his naked and hairless flippers out of the water, catch a cool sea breeze, and that will cool down his entire body. As we saw before with Moby, this porpoising behavior comes in handy when it comes to chasing down their prey. Now, of course, this does use up a large amount of energy, and if Pepper didn't get a meal out there in the wild, that energy would go to waste. At the moment, there's a much easier way for seals to find their next meal, and that's by chasing down and ripping apart fishing nets and fishing trawlers. Seals have incredibly powerful neck and jaws, and they have no trouble at all ripping apart this netting. <laughs> But of course, seals are also incredibly playful animals as well. After they've ripped apart this 